This one doesn't play around with rainbow lights or color bits. It's all black and it means business. Welcome to Machines More. <laughs> Probably the only deviation from that script is the slightly fruity sounding 4 Pro moniker here, but I think we can let that one slide, right? So a big thanks to Be Quiet for providing the test samples today. Full disclosure, this is an independent review and I'm not compensated by Be Quiet for it and all review findings and testing methodology, it's independent. All right, so a whole slew of high-end performance options released from Be Quiet, but it boils down to a 120 millimeter and a 140 millimeter model and there's just differing max RPM limits and included accessories. Now arguably I think the 140 millimeter option it's the more remarkable release simply because contenders in that space they're far and few but the real fight is in the 120 millimeter arena. This one is targeted at the highest end so we'll be pitting the new 120 millimeter silent wings for pros against the best in class from Noctua and Fantex, and we'll find out today whether this fan is up to the task. We'll also check out the regular Silent Wings 4. Now this, this flagship one, it wears the Pro designation, but other than a few quality of life improvements, you know, like these radiator specific corners, this uh, braided cable, I think a lot of you will be just as happy with the Silent Wings 4 PWM in the high speed version, because uh, for all intents and purposes, they're the same fan. So quick highlights, the Silent Wings 4 family, it's the continuation of the Silent Wings family from Be Quiet. They're built as a version 4 here, but they've gone through a very serious redesign compared to the version 3. These blades, they're a lot more curved, you got a lower tip to frame clearance, and you've, got, uh, you've still got those airflow grooves that Be Quiet puts on a lot of their fans, and yeah, this design, it definitely puts it a lot closer to the appearance of the Fantex T30 and the Noctua NF-A12 by 25. The 140 millimeter version has seven blades, uh, nine blades on the 120 millimeter, just like the Noctua. Although these blades, they're a bit wider. The construction is polybutylene terephthalate, which is a thermoplastic polymer. Be Quiet chose to reinforce it with 30% glass fiber. It does feel quite supple. The blades are not quite as thick as the Noctua or the Fantex. You know, sound a little bit more resonant than the Noctua, but it still feels nice and it should be very durable nonetheless. One nice detail on this frame is the uh, rubberized material around the circle opening of the blades, which will serve to reduce vibration. Also has a sealing effect. Well, that depends on the application, of course. We've got a six pole motor, fluid dynamic bearing, and the spin, it's quite satisfying and there is no axle play, so it's solid. Depending on which version you get, there are a few RPM range differences. It's quite a number of SKUs between the 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter versions, but for the higher end target market for these fans in the 120 millimeter versions, I think most of you, you should just be considering either the PWM high speed version of the Silent Wings 4, and this one goes up to 2500 RPM, or the 4 Pro, and this one goes up to 3000 RPM with a three-way toggle switch. And so even, keep in mind, even if you get the highest speed fan, you can always set fan speeds and curves in your motherboard or with a fan controller. So the higher speed version is just more versatile. And with this one, it's just easier to limit it if you do need to. You don't get any cable adapters like you do with the Nocta, but you do have the switch on that fan itself. Now, I do wish that the switch were on the perimeter of the frame as opposed to the exhaust side of the fan, making for easy access regardless of which side you have this oriented. For example, if you have it installed on a radiator, pushing air through the radiator, you won't be able to access that switch. But of course, the Fantex, it suffers from the same placement. And realistically, though, I don't anticipate that this is a frequently accessed function, though. It's more of a set it and forget it type of thing, so it's not a big deal. The 4 Pro, you've just got these nice radiator-specific corners, and they click into place really nicely. It's a cool system that's interchangeable. And a very nicely finished cable connector and cable, and this one is high, it feels high-end. It's the same similar material to, to what you would sleeve um, a cable with. So I think this one's high-end build already. And uh, compared to the Nox, something like the Nox, where you've got uh, just a more simple sleeve here with heat shrink, and it's just definitely not as nicely finished. Comparing these two though, between the Silent Wings 4 and the Pro, 
the core of the fan, it's basically the same uh, with the difference in that RPM, of course, but uh, these do only come with a standard screw mount corner or one that allows for push pin insulation. And uh, both of these will come with black fan screws to finish off. Now these are nice looking fans, but the proof is in the pudding. So let's just go to this fight here. To test, I mounted these on a 240 millimeter AIO rad. This is the one we used in the AIO fan comparison not too long ago, the Sapphire S240. And it's an Azetec unit. It's pretty typical rad, pretty typical, uh, typical fin spacing. So the performance, it's a good reference point for liquid cooling users. Two noise levels I'm testing at for noise normalized testing. One is a lower noise optimized level, which is one decibel above the noise floor. This is just past the point where you can start hearing the fans over the rest of the system. And as you can see here, the RPM attracts quite closely to that from the flagship NFA 12 by 25 and the Fantex T30 here at 1220 RPM. Tested with the 5800X and our NR200 test system, 105 watts PPT. This fan is quite good, but it does still lag the Nacho and the T30 here. It's really not by much though, uh, but for sure it's a noticeable improvement over the previous generation Silent Wings 3. In fact, I'd say it's not really a comparison. It's a huge leap here, huge advance. Well done by Be Quiet from an iterative product improvement standpoint. At the higher noise level, where I would consider limiting a high-end liquid cooled system to the Silent Wings 4 Pro they're still pretty impressive here. Now the gap is a little bit smaller here between the Noctua's, uh, but it is still a little bit behind. As for those old Silent Wings 3, well, they actually don't go that fast. And these were limited to 1400 RPM. So you could keep in mind for the results here that they were 0.5 decibels quieter. And from a max RPM standpoint, the fours, they've also had a huge leap forward. So by all accounts, it obliterates the old one. For the non-pro version, you don't get the rad corners, which look really good when they're mounted, but there's actually only a marginal difference here. Although this is gonna be dependent on the airflow pattern in your case, since the solid corners, they do do something. They do seal off the rad to prevent errant airflow, if that is present. Against the NFA 12 by 25, the pro version does have a distinguishing feature since it does also have a 3000 RPM mode. Due to the spec variants, I didn't actually quite get there with the ones I had uh, from the test samples, but unless you have a very good reason, I don't think users should be using this regularly because it's super loud. Uh, but if you have a higher ambient temp uh, or you wanna push an overclock for a benchmark run, yeah, it's nice to have that in your back pocket. It's just you know a lot more noise for a very small benefit. Overall, in the typical sub 2000 RPM ranges here, though, the noise is well managed. You don't have any odd vibrations from the motor. Be Quiet did really well by their brand name here. So let's just go through a few RPM levels and we'll compare uh, also against the Noctua at the noise normalized level. Take a listen. Pretty good, right? With the blade design being similar here with similar RPMs at the same noise level, I think the more or less one degree gap we saw in the test uh, compared to the NFA 12 by 25, it's owing to a few subtle differences. Uh, the Silent Wings, they improved to 1.0 millimeters for their tip clearance, but the Noctua still has a 0.5 millimeter advantage because it's that's spaced at 0.5 millimeters. And you still have more supple, you have thicker blades with both the Noctua and the Fantex. And while the blade design is really similar in appearance, I did note the Noctua design that features narrower blades with a bit more spacing in between them. So to answer the question we set out to today, in terms of performance, we can't crown a new king just yet, but since it's really close, there are some other factors you might want to consider. The Pro version's MSRP at launch is supposed to be about $31. That's a dollar less than the current price for the tan and brown version of the Noctua, and $2 less than the Chromax version. The price of the Fantex is supposed to be a dollar less than this one, but that has been fluctuating depending on the availability. 
at the end of the day, they're all within a dollar or two of each other. But here's the kicker, if you just want the performance or if it's just a case fan application and you're fine without the more finished looking radiator corners, I would simply go for the non-pro version. Now that sounds bad uh, saying it's non-pro, but I mean, these are essentially the same fan just with fewer uh, finishing touches. And this one in the 120 millimeter PWM high speed skew is the one I'd go for since this one will get you up to 2,500 RPM, which is more than enough for most systems. And the MSRP is only $23. So even though the flagship here is the pro version, I think this is the star of the 120 millimeter show because it fills that gap in that 20 to 30 dollar space that doesn't really have any great contenders right now not everyone needs the absolute best performance and for just a small performance trade-off you get a much more affordable fan and uh, not too many fans can even get within a degree degree and a half of either Noctua or fantex and similar noise normalized testing so it's really really easy to recommend this one at this price and i wouldn't feel guilty deploying this as a case fan either if you are set on spending around 30 dollars for a fan or if this is for a high-end build in terms of performance then i'd still lean towards either the Noctua or the fantex over the 4 pro uh, for me this is a close third place in terms of performance in, in the 120 millimeter higher hierarchy uh, but this one does have excellent finish quality and it's still definitely worth considering because of this really really nicely finished cable uh, it's ready to go if you don't want to have to sleeve your cable yeah it's all black really really sleek and uh, i think they did a good job here so if you found the review helpful if so please subscribe if you haven't already give a like links are down below thanks for watching today